Welcome to today's session on GeneMapper IDX 1.7. I'm Mark Danis, HID Software Product Manager, and I'm excited to share with you today all the updates we've captured by listening to you, our users, for GeneMapper IDX version 1.7. The first thing we're going to discuss today is the database. We've upgraded the Oracle database to a new Postgres SQL. This was developed to the Center for Internet Security benchmarks allowing you to be sure of the best security possible. Gone now with the result of removing that Oracle database is the database dashboard tool. We have now incorporated that directly into the software. It's here underneath the admin menu under database backup. Similar to database dashboard, you have the ability to backup now and restore a prior database. However, what is new and based on listening to you, our customers and the feedback you've provided is the ability to schedule this database backup on a configurable basis. Next, let's take a look at our new options, starting with the file menu. In toolbar, in file under product, project options, we now have the ability to set an auto save status. So no longer do you have to worry about a network connection loss, losing all your data. Autosave runs in the background at any configurable time of your choice. So presently on my screen, I have it set at five minutes. So every five minutes, any previous uncommitted comments or changes you've made to your data will be saved permanently. So you no longer have to worry about that lost connection to the database. From there, let's take a look at GeneMapper IDX Manager and changes we've made in the analysis method. Starting with the Peak Quality tab, one of the first things you'll notice here is we've now added a pull-up detector. This pull-up detector can be configurable on an on or off basis, and you can choose to label your pull-up or completely remove those pull-up peaks. Additionally, you can choose what is the maximum amount of pull-up that you wanted to see or filter, as well as what is the offset measured in data points with respect to that parent peak. Next, let's move to the Allele tab. In the Allele tab, you'll see the marker-specific stutter ratio that you're accustomed to seeing all the time. But below that, we have two new settings. We have the ability to add allele-specific stutter ratios, as well as the new consideration for additive stutter and so those are those peaks that sit between a two peaks that could cause forward and backward stutter that could then be added. Those ratios can be added together to filter that peak. Once again, these are all optional. Let's move to the peak detector tab. In peak detector, you see there's also a new option here we have available for use of marker specific thresholds. Similar to what we saw for stutter, marker-specific thresholds are now also going to be settable within your panel manager, which is where we're going to head next. So here in panel manager, you notice that I've got the Global Filer Express panel open. If we drill down on the D3 locus and we look at stutter ratios, your normal expected plus and minus settings are there as well as these new allele specific values are able to be added. Just because you see four on the screen doesn't mean you're limited to that. You can put in any number you like and you don't have to type them in. You can simply import a file that will import all of your allele specific plus or minus stutter. Additionally, now within Panel Manager, we have that ability to set marker specific threshold. So you can set your analytical threshold differently for any of the markers you wanted to. And it doesn't stop at analytical threshold. You can set different PHRs for your markers, as well as minimum and maximum hetero and homozygote peak heights, as well as a cutoff filter. Let's start to take a look at some samples within the software now. Your eyes didn't just deceive you. We opened three projects all at the same time. This is a new feature in GeneMapper IDX 
where you are able to look at multiple projects at the same time in the same window. This functionality not only allows you to manually compare samples across different projects, but also do so within the Profile Comparison Tool. Profile Comparison Tool will now look at all samples from all open projects for evaluation. There's no change to the Sample Concordance tab, but in the Sample Comparison tab, you'll see that we've now added a minimum number of matching alleles. Previously, this was hard-coded to a value of one, so you never saw it. So when you compared samples in your project, you would potentially have a lot of not so great results to have to look at due to the presence of partial profiles. Now, with the ability to filter your results based on a minimum number of matching alleles, you can have those partial profiles removed from consideration, making the process a lot easier and showing you only the results that matter and that are important to you. Additionally, to multi-project support, we've also added multiple plot view support, where you can now view your sample plots side by side, right next to each other, allowing you to compare profiles more easily. Looking at our sample plots window, right away your eyes might be drawn to the new comments feature that we have. Now you can click anywhere within your electropharogram and add these comments. Simply by right clicking, choosing add text box and adding the comment of your choice. While talking with you, our users, about the way that you interact and use our software, we heard that there is a lot of things that need to appear or get written, or maybe even in PDF Manager, get added to the electropharogram after annotation in GeneMapper IDX. This ability to add a comment now no longer requires you to handwrite potentially on the electropharogram or take it to another piece of software. You can do it all right here within GeneMapper IDX. Additionally, these notes can be dragged any place you want, as well as a number of features such as going back and editing the note, putting a strike through through the note, or changing any of the font or background or background color. Sticking with the theme of things that you need to add to electropharograms after analysis, we've now made some additional updates as well as adding comments. If I move to a newer plot setting that I created, you might notice other additions that we've made, such as adding the PAT to each individual locus. So you no longer have to write that peak amplitude threshold on your electropharogram. Also now we've added the analysis method, as well as the panel that can now be printed out when you export your electropharogram and you'll have that available for viewing in your court case record. All of these are available under plot settings on an optional basis. You can choose to add that analysis method or panel, as well as the analytical threshold that you're, that you're seeing appear in the marker header bars. And then one additional new function we have is the ability to display stutter in a grayed out form. So if you did want to ensure that what you're seeing in the baseline is stutter, you can choose to view stutter grayed out and you will see that appear such as we do here where we have these grayed out peaks. Here and here. Staying with plot settings, and if you remember back that pull-up detector that we set, you can see here that the pull-up detector has detected several instances of pull-up in our electropharogram. And they are all annotated with the letters PU indicating pull-up. Also a new function in GeneMapper IDX 1.7 we heard from you was the ability to look at peak height ratios not only within a die channel, which we all know we've been able to do for some time. You can see the peak height ratio here of 1.6%, but we've now included the ability to do the same functionality across different die channels. So you can see the two peaks I have selected here have a peak height ratio of 1.7%. Next, let's talk about printing. We've heard from plenty of you that this is an opportunity for improvement 
and we're hoping to deliver that here to you in GeneMapper IDX version 1.7. We've cleaned up a lot of the print formatting issues, such as now you can see the entire sample file line within your electropharogram. Also, you can see as demonstrated with the new updated plot settings, you can read your analysis method as well as your panel and your notes will be annotated right within your electric paragraph. Finally, we've gotten rid of that 10 page print job limit. I'm happy to now tell you that you can print freely 500 pages at a time to your PDF exporter. Coming back to our main samples window, another new feature we've added to GeneMapper IDX 1.7 is the ability for you to import your analysis method, panel, and size standard right from your HID or FSA file. For those of you that have been around for a while, back to the days of the 3130, you may recall this as a possibility back then where you would import your sample into GeneMapper IDX and with it, all of your sample information would be pre-populated as was recorded in your plate document. I'm now pleased to say that we've brought this functionality back again with GeneMapper IDX 1.7. So whenever you import your samples into GeneMapper IDX, if you've set your analysis panel and size standard in the appropriate fields, you will now have all of these options pre-populated and you don't need to go through and set them manually every time any longer. And speaking of instrumentation, you've undoubtedly heard of the Seek Studio Flex by now. The Seek Studio Flex is exclusively supported in GeneMapper IDX 1.7, but it doesn't stop there. We go all the way back to the 310, so you can analyze all of your legacy data going back all the way to 310 to the brand new Seek Studio Flex. And then finally, We've offered Windows 10 support now for a few years. With GeneMapper IDX 1.7, we've included support for Windows 11 as well. So now you can confidently allow IT to do your Windows 11 backup knowing GeneMapper IDX will not be affected. We hope that you're as excited about these new features as we are. We're always ready to listen to you about any new suggestions or feedback you have on the GeneMapper IDX software. Contact us to receive a demo version of the software to test in your laboratory today.